Welcome everyone to our newest video, We are the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Sofia Boulay. And today we're going to talk about how to make your piano playing sound more professional. Everyone who is playing the piano wants their playing, of course, to sound great. And there are a few things you can do that will help you do that. It's actually much simpler than you thought. First of all, don't pick in your nose. Let's get to the real video. So let's talk today about how to make your playing sound more professional. And when I ask my students, when we ask our students what sounds professional in your ears, they pretty much always come up with the same answer, and that is fast playing. So in students' eyes, professional playing is somebody who can play really, really fast. And there is just so much, so much beyond playing fast. Playing fast is merely one of the many factors that makes your playing sound more professional. Today we're gonna discuss a few factors that you can work on to make your playing sound more professional. And the experience we've had so far, we never actually had an exception. People who try to play fast because of wanting to look more professional usually always, without any exception, they're the ones who end up playing the worst, the most unprofessional. So don't force that. Let that come as a result of the tips we are going to give you today. Now let's begin with our first idea, with our first point for today. What's going to make your playing look and sound much more professional? That would be choose appropriate tempo. Yes, the piece you've chosen might have an extremely fast tempo, something that you wish you achieve and something that you wish you could do, but that doesn't mean that you start there. If you try, like we just mentioned, if you try to play in a tempo that you can't, you are going to sound very unprofessional. You're going to sound very sloppy. And so one of your main tasks should be to always look for what's your ideal tempo at the moment. And don't worry, with time, that tempo is naturally going to increase. And so you are always, while you're climbing the ladder of playing faster and faster, you are always simultaneously with climbing, you're going to sound also quite professional. Now I think it would be extremely useful if I not only tell you about this, but I also show you what I mean by choosing an appropriate tempo. We're going to go with an example. I'm going to try to demonstrate to you what you should do in order to improve that, in order to sound better with the Mozart C major sonata. As we said, our example will be with this beautiful Mozart sonata. You probably know it. And so I'm going to give you an example of how to choose an appropriate tempo. The reason that you might sound very unprofessional when you're playing this piece is simply because you choose too fast tempo. And what happens then is you start playing sloppy. I'm going to try now to demonstrate for you what it means to choose not an appropriate tempo, tempo that you are not going to be able to manage throughout the whole piece, and then how your playing will start sounding sloppy or unprofessional. Let's say that you've heard somebody play the piece in this tempo. Now this, of course, I'm exaggerating everything, different things, or, or maybe things happen even worse than I'm showing. It doesn't matter, you get my point. One thing that can happen is that you reach a difficult passage and suddenly you start playing wrong notes. And then also what can happen is you slow down and speed up all the time, like this. Which would be a little bit better than all the sloppiness, but nevertheless, that doesn't sound professional. You are going to recognize that something is wrong, something doesn't sound good, and if you're playing for somebody, the people who are listening to you will recognize that something is going wrong as well. What you can do is something very simple. We said, choose an appropriate tempo. Now your question might be, but how do I do that? Well, one way would be very simple to think from the beginning, imagine just a slow tempo. Well, this could work, but usually it doesn't. Why? Because in every piece of music, there are passages that are more difficult than other passages. Like, for example, when I started pretending to be sloppy, 
from bar 5 in this piece with the scales, that's a passage that's much more difficult than the beginning of the piece. And so you want to sit behind the piano and envision how you're going to play not the beginning of the piece, but your most difficult passage. And we're going to assume that this is your most difficult passage. So it doesn't matter which piece it is, you can apply the same thing. Sit behind the piano and instead of imagining in your head this, slowly, you imagine this. And you imagine, is this the tempo that I can play? The first thing you might come up with in your mind is the fast tempo. But you, you remember that you don't want to sound unprofessional, you know that you're not ready to play in that tempo, that's not a problem. Then you imagine something slow like... And then you simply start playing the piece in that tempo. When you come to this passage that initially was it is and you're much more aware of what you're doing you're playing much less sloppy maybe even perfect that is going to sound professional and no it doesn't matter that your tempo isn't as quick as you want it to be like we said in the video that's going to increase over time the most important is you're giving yourself a good feeling you're giving everybody you're playing for a good feeling and overall you sound much more professional now before we get back to the video if you're enjoying the video so far give us a like that's going to help our video and our youtube channel overall enormously and also you can already subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so thank you so much let's get back to our second tip for today our second tip of today is to do with phrasing and in music you have phrases and you can compare that to sentences in language the music and language are pretty similar just like you have a sentence in language you have a beginning a middle and an end and with that I mean obviously you start your sentence um, and then at some part you have an important part of your sentence so uh, a word that you are stressing or your voice goes up because you uh, get emotional or you get excited uh, so your sentence always goes from a beginning to a, a point of tension let's call it and then you relax at the end if you notice if you uh, notice people speaking their voices also go a little bit up and down, which you can also compare to tension and relaxation. So just as you have sentences in language, you have sentences in music and we call those phrases. And the first tip we would have is to think about your phrasing. Think, where are the sentences? And I'm gonna demonstrate that to you in a minute. But the second thing I'd like to talk about is that we always begin the phrase and we end the phrase in the same way. Just like if you would write your sentence down on paper, you would start with a capital letter and you would end with the punctuation. In music, it's the same. You never start a phrase with an accent and you never end it with an accent. Unless specifically mentioned in the score with an accent or with a sforzando or whatever, generally we never start with an accent, we never end with an accent. So that is something to really work on. Now let's demonstrate that and I'm gonna pick the same sonata that Dimitar just showed you. So I was speaking to you about not starting your phrase and not ending your phrase with an accent, but in order to not do that, we actually have to first explore what are our phrases. And I think a lot of you don't even consciously think about your phrasing. Uh, so that is something that first we're going to explore and let's explore it now together. And I would encourage you to do this for every single piece that you're playing and that you're going to play in the future. Always explore your phrases. Always know what your phrases are. Where do they start? Where do they end? How long are they? Are they longer phrases? Are they shorter phrases? You really need to do some exploration with this and it's also really fun. Let's look now at the first phrase of this Mozart sonata. And you might ask, how do I know what is the phrase? I think that it's a combination of feeling and experience. So a lot of people would naturally have a feeling of what is a phrase. And even if they wouldn't naturally have a feeling by themselves, if, for example, I tell you what is the first phrase, 
probably most of you would find it really logical. And that means that as long as you have somebody explaining it to you enough times, you will start recognizing it yourself as well over time. So let's look now at the first phrase. I'll play actually the whole first bar and then you can think, you can even pause the video, think yourself what would be the first phrase and then afterwards let's, let's explore it together. I apologize, I said the first bar, of course I meant the whole first system. I just played the whole first system for you and I'm very curious to see if you if you actually pause the video, if you actually tried yourself to see what is the first phrase, what is our first sentence of music and uh, let's look at it now together. So the first phrase of this piece would be... That's the first phrase. So it has a beginning, it has a middle and it has an end. So this is the beginning, obviously. I would say this is the middle, this is where the tension goes, this is where the attention also goes. And that's the ending, that's the ending of your phrase. And then immediately let's see what the second phrase is. This is the beginning of the second phrase. It starts somewhere higher, it's calling attention to it. it ends pretty much in the same way as the first phrase did. So these are two phrases. So you see the first step is actually exploring what are the phrases. So if you don't or if you're not in the habit of doing that, I would suggest start doing that. It's not only fun, but it's going to make your playing sound much more professional. And second of all, you can work on not starting with an accent and not ending with an accent. So don't start like this. We see this very, very often. And to be fair, it is tough to start a piece, but that's what, something we see really often. And if you start with an ac accent, everything after that, you're going to have to make it even louder to build up a phrase, because that's what it's about. You need to build a phrase. That's why you start a little softer, you build it, and then you end it. You, you end it again softer. If you start with an accent, you have nowhere to go. So this is something you want to avoid. So just experiment with your touch, with approximately the dynamics that you want, and take your time for that. That's something we see very, very often as well, so ending the phrase on an accent, and that is something that you should work on as well. And I would advise, as usual, musical things just work best when you do them really slow, when you take the time. So, before you end, Make sure, that was a little too soft as you heard, before you end, make sure that you take the time to be sure that you're soft enough. And this, you know, I'm, I'm sure you might be worried about, but how can I do that in tempo? That's not something you should be worried about right now. First, get the control, and the control you get in slow, and then this is going to build. Uh, your speed is going to build. It's going to naturally become easier and easier for you. And when something comes easier for you, you're able to do it faster. So don't worry about that. First, have the patience to be in control of your phrase. So first, find your phrase. Be aware that there are phrases in music. And second of all, be in control by them, by starting them softly and ending them softly. Now let's get back to the third tip. And now we're down to our last tip, our last point for today. And that would be the pedal, pedaling. The fact that we have this right pedal on the piano is something incredible. It makes music sound so, so interesting, so nice. You can combine different tones, you can combine different harmonies. It's just a great tool to use in our piano playing. But there is a big responsibility that comes with great power with the pedal. With great power comes great responsibility. If you overdo it, pedaling blurry pedaling, when you put the pedal and you don't lift it on the right spots, it can just bind all notes together, notes that even don't belong together, and then you get a big blur. That is definitely going to help you sound more and more unprofessional. Now, without delaying our tip, because if we get into talking about pedaling, that's going to be not even one video. We can talk hours about pedaling because that's an art in itself. Just how to pedal in general is an art in itself. Since we opened our video with the Moonlight Sonata and since it is a piece that almost everybody wants to play, we thought let's go and give you an example with the pedaling there. One of the most common things that makes playing sound unprofessional is unclear pedal. 
And there's three main things that can make your pedaling unclear. We're going to assume that you know where to change your pedal. If you don't know that, that's a whole different story, but we're going to assume that you are knowing where to change, but that your change is not completely well done. And that can be three different things that you're doing. First of all, your change might not be high enough. So with that, I mean that you're changing, but that your, your foot is traveling a too small distance. Now I changed, but my foot didn't go up high enough to make the change. And as you hear, we're blurring the notes now. The, the change isn't completely clean. And the main problem, you know, if you do that once, okay, it's okay. But if you do that throughout the whole piece, the whole piece is going to blur together. So that's the first thing that you could be doing wrong with your pedaling. You might not be changing high enough. The second thing is, is also very common, is the timing of the change isn't good. So most common would be, I see this almost all the time with students, is that they would change too early. And that is... You would, it's actually difficult to do when, when you are already played a lifetime of correct pedaling, um, but you could either get a little gap in that way, So that would be one more thing to focus on. And both these things, by the way, you can practice doing correctly in only one way, and that would be to take enough time. The way that I practiced it actually to have a real good pedal change is simply to take the time, to take slow, and even to look at my foot to see if I'm doing the correct timing and if I'm lifting high enough. So taking the time, even looking at your foot, would be really essential to practicing to have proper pedal. And the last thing, the third thing that you could be doing wrong to make your pedal sound unclear would be to not give your change enough time. And with that I mean that different changes need different time to clear up. This might need less time to clear up than a distance with more intense notes, for example. This one, for example, might need more time to clear up. And with more time, I mean that you leave your foot up for a longer amount of time before you push it down again. And because that's essentially what we're doing when we're changing, we're pushing it up, we're putting it up to clear the, to clear the notes, and then we're pushing it down again. So different notes require different amount of time to clear up. And that is why it's very, very essential that you use your ears while you are pedaling. It's very important that you listen to your pedaling. And again, that can only be done, that can only be achieved in slow tempo. So those are the three things that you could do to be improving your pedaling. And let's get back to the video now. Now, if you haven't done so till now, we would ask from you to like our video if of course you enjoyed it and to subscribe to our channel. In this way, you will help us by liking and subscribing. You will help us grow our channel here on YouTube. Also, what you can do is if you enjoy the video and you know other people who might enjoy it as well, share the video with them. Don't forget that you can follow us on Instagram. We upload there very regularly. We also upload a lot of our playing so you can see us playing if you enjoy that. For us, recording this video was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for being here and watching and we'll see you very soon again.